This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. And I think we should have a bit of a talk. So firstly, the obvious, this is an absolutely beautiful rig. It is specced so nicely, very balanced, and aesthetically, it's probably one of the best looking computers, in my opinion, that we've ever had in this series. The black and white works so well together. It's balanced nicely. The case looks super cool. It just all around was built with care. But there's one major problem. It doesn't post. But here's why the owner thinks that's the case. A short while ago, he had a friend repay the CPU. I'm not sure if this was in conjunction with a replacement AIO. This has been slowly upgraded over time. But during that process, somehow, supposedly, the socket was destroyed. And this being a modern Intel platform means the pins themselves in the socket were likely bent out of shape or worst case scenario, broken off completely. In which case we'll be replacing a motherboard at the very least in this episode. Now I know it's not my place, but in person I will say the owner was super chill. He didn't appear to hold any grudge against that friend of his. I'm not sure if they're still friends today, uh, but he was very cool and he was very candid about what he saw with his own eyes apparently, what he suspected was the issue. That's gonna go a long way for us in this video. I don't even think I'm gonna start the system up to begin with because I don't wanna risk damaging other things if in fact that socket is trashed. So without further ado, let's get to it. I hope you will stay with me. By this point, you already know that Starforge Systems built some of the coolest looking gaming PCs on the market. As a huge RuneScape nerd, this one in particular blew me away. And this same attention to detail carries over into their wall art and desk mats. You see, Starforge wall art is UV printed on high quality acrylic for this gorgeous finish. And you can snag it in sizes up to 16 by 24 inches. Some are even embossed like these for dragon light and clouded gates. They look fantastic on any wall and come with their own friendly mounting strips. And as for the desk mats, they practically speak for themselves. They're massive, ultra durable, and ship with various art from your favorite shows, games, and more. I've personally been repping this old school RuneScape world map. Would you like to know more? For all of this and more from Starforge, be sure to click the link below to start shopping today. Hello there, and welcome to Fix or Flop. In this series, we attempt to fix broken computers like this one for free, so we don't charge for replacement hardware or labor, and that's thanks to your viewership. The fact that you click on these videos gives us a kickback on the monetization side of things, and uh, we don't offload that cost to the owners of these rigs who are gracious enough to drop them off and uh, allow them to be featured in videos. So it's a really cool thing that uh, we've been running now for six seasons, and I hope to continue it for several more. Not wishing it will on. PCs, obviously, but if something does go wrong, you can fill out a form linked in the description. We'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. Now, like I said, since we suspect a pretty messed up socket, I'm not gonna bother powering the system on for risk of damaging anything else, if that hasn't already happened. I'm gonna remove the AIO block here, the CPU as well, and check out those pins. And I will say, this is easier said than done. It's a very densely packed rig. It looks very beautiful as a result, in my opinion, but we have a lot of wires to deal with. Let's see if I can move these out of the way. I really like how he's cable manage this. We'll remove these retention screws one by one and we can reveal the CPU. Let's see what we're working with here. It is a Core i9 10900K. Okay, so top of the line for Intel 10th gen. Should be noted there was sufficient thermal paste here, maybe a bit more than needed, but a little more is not gonna hurt anything. I like to take Q-tips soaked in isopropyl alcohol to clean up the surroundings of these chips before removal. All right, and here we go, the grand reveal. Oh, yep. We've got a few issues with this socket. You can see, especially on the upper side of the socket, there are several places where it looks like pins are severely bent. And I'm hoping that is the extent of the damage. If any of these are broken, again, it will warrant a full board replacement. I don't have the tools, nor frankly the skills, even with my own physical hands. I don't even think I keep my hands straight enough to re-solder missing pins in a socket this fine. I'm not even sure if it's a viable repair, even for board repair specialists. They might even just tell you to replace the board outright, which is what I would do and what we have done in situations where pins are missing. But again, though, it doesn't look like any are. I think many are just shoved in one direction or another. And for that matter, I'm not entirely sure how just repasting a CPU causes this much damage. You shouldn't even have to replace the chip. You shouldn't have to remove it from the socket at all. You can repaste a chip with the CPU fully like locked in the entire time. It doesn't look like anything was dropped in here because the the bent pins are kind of all spread out. It's not like they're all in one big cluster. I'm gonna try to keep the board in the case without disconnecting anything else here. It's just gonna add more labor later. I'd prefer to keep things simple. So I'm gonna remove the socket cover, a little retention mechanism here, 
And uh, I'll get out my trusty sewing needle for this job. For a fine socket like this one, I found that a sewing needle is among the best cheap tools you can use to fix bent pins. It's small enough that it doesn't interfere with other pins in the process. And I will attempt to demonstrate that now. I apologize in advance for the shadows, the poor angles. It's just not a good way to get this on film while I'm bending. Just note that the fine tip of this sewing needle is going to aid in the recovery of the socket massively. I'm also gonna be very careful while I bend because if any of these snap in the process again, that's pretty much a guaranteed board replacement. You can see this one off to the far left I've almost straightened out already. It's very close and I'm trying my best not to interfere with any of the other pins around it because they all are situated correctly. This is just very tedious. You can see occasionally the needle just flies in a random direction. It's important not to apply too much pressure for this very reason. I think that's gonna make contact now. I'm probably not gonna bend it too much more again for risk of it fully breaking off. It looks like this one near the corner is bent all the way backwards. Yeah, this is not gonna be fun. I was wondering why there was like a, a gap near this corner and it's because this pin was pulling a 180 on us. I'm actually gonna switch over to my microscope for this next part. You can see uh, yeah, fingerprints there. So it does get up close and personal and I'm gonna use this to determine if a few points I'm suspicious about in the socket have broken off pins already. I can't find a couple of them and I'm unsure if they're just bent back very aggressively or if they're just outright missing. Also, yeah, my thumb is pretty disgusting. The two areas of concern, are we missing a pin? Nope, that's just really bent out of shape, but that tells me all I need to know, that is savable. Now how about this other one here in the corner where we were working? Yeah, one of those is still very badly bent. Looks like it's bent toward the bottom. So I'll have to be very careful again not to hurt any of the other pins around it. This is the problem with these kinds of sockets. Eight hours later. Okay, maybe not eight hours later, but uh, you can see after some time, the socket definitely looks better than where we started. It's not perfect. It probably will never be at this point since the metal has been slightly compromised around the pins that have been totally bent backwards. But I do think we have sufficient contact here for a post if in fact this is the only issue with this rig. Just checking the underside of the chip. All looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and install it back into the socket. We're gonna tighten things down. I'm not going to reinstall the cooler just yet, but I want to try for a quick post before we go any further. Not sure if again, this is the only problem with this rig at this point. Don't wanna forget about all four of his dims. I pretty much want everything exactly as it was when the system first arrived, save, of course, the socket. And here we go. This is the first time we've powered the system on in this video. I'm curious if our pin bending skills have paid off. If not, I might give it one extra go, but beyond that, I think we're just gonna end up replacing the board. Let's see what happens. Okay. So far, so good. Man, does this thing look pretty when it is all lit up. Love the way this was done. Come on now, give us something. Come on. Come on. Is this it? No, oh, maybe just because we don't have signal. It went black. Um, all right, that really sucks. Oh, actually, you know what? Debug LED there is telling us that it, oh, it's a posting, all right. Hey, I just, uh, just had to be a little more patient. <laughs> okay, so it looks like the socket was the only thing wrong with this entire rig. I mean, we're getting picture out through the graphics card, so that seems fine. Looks like his BIOS was reset. Maybe it was just uh, never set up to begin with because uh, he's running on a base 2133 frequency right now. So we'll enable a couple things in the bus. We'll make sure that his temperatures look good once we reconnect the pump entirely. I've got it sitting on the CPU just with a couple of screws, but it's not powered or anything. So we'll go ahead and turn this back off and uh, finish that up for him and just run a few more checks to be on the safe side. I'll drop in some fresh thermal grizzly cryonaut. Make sure his block is fastened this time, but not too tight. Try to get cable management as clean as he originally had it. And let's try this one more time. So cool. Love the way this looks. My son's sitting here. Books, what do you think about this? Cool. It does look cool, doesn't it? Really, really cool. Yeah, the owner did a really good job with this. 
So we're just gonna make sure that we have one more post. Uh, we'll hop into that BIOS, configure a few things, also make sure that uh, his temperatures aren't all out of whack. You can see that's the debug LED I was talking about earlier, actually a doctor debug to accompany it. There's our post again. You can see we have several drives detected. I'll make sure that these all line up with what the owner described and that none are missing. Also 64 gigs of DDR4 in this rig. We'll quickly enable XMP. Looks like 3600 megahertz for this kit. You can also double check CPU temperatures. 31 degrees Celsius is very healthy. This can also be cross-referenced with his AIO, which conveniently is set to show liquid temperatures currently 28 degrees Celsius. Nothing wrong with that either. Also, this is rotated 90 degrees because I actually oriented the block slightly differently than he did so there wasn't so much stress on these tubes and uh, that can be very quickly rectified in software. Lastly it does look like we have Windows installed on his Samsung 970 Evo Plus. It's a 500 gig NVMe. Let's go ahead and try for that. We'll just press F10. That should reboot the system. I don't think we'll have to touch anything else. It's very nice, where, and I don't want to jinx it because we haven't actually fully booted into Windows yet, but so far it is nice that we haven't had to replace anything hardware-wise in this rig. Most of it is fairly new, or at the very least, fairly expensive. Just goes to show that with a bit of diligence, you can save expensive hardware. I'm not sure how long the owner had this rig up and running before it was repasted and the socket was pretty messed up. But there we go, that is it. That's all we need to see. Uh, beyond this, I mean, we could run some stress tests, but I don't like diving into operating systems, especially with potentially sensitive files and things exist, unless I absolutely have to. So far, the graphics card is not artifacting at all. This is kind of a best case scenario. We haven't had to replace any hardware, which is a huge win. And I'm fairly confident that the socket surgery, so to speak, we performed in this one, will stand the test of time. I didn't notice that any of the pins were on the verge of breaking. We've had that happen in a few other instances, and I've told those owners that if they do have boot problems in the future, we'll address it probably with just board replacements. But this one I think will hold up as long as it's not being slammed around during transport once it's dropped back off. I've noticed with the rig just sitting here that the CPU is running a tad hot. The graphics card would normally equalize thermally around 40, 45 degrees Fahrenheit under air. Uh, so I'm not totally concerned there. And we're getting plenty of airflow from the front of the case because this is again more of the like airflow style H5 from NZXT. Uh, but you'll notice that our CPU temps, at least according to this Kraken AIO, are somewhere in the mid to high 40s. It, it's abnormal. I just realized one of these fans is not spinning. This happened after I was tampering with it. So let's check connections. It looks like, is this for, yep, right here. Piece of cake. We'll just get this reconnected. Okay, and now we are good to go. This should also help with CPU temperatures. It's uh, starting to make more sense now. I have powered this on over and over without issue. It loads into Windows every single time. The RGB all works, the fans work. Again, I'm pretty surprised that we were able to pull this off given how bad the socket was when it first arrived. You have to be very careful, very precise when using something like a sewing needle on a socket as fine as a modern Intel one, even older Intel sockets. I mean, they aren't as densely packed, but they are still so fragile, especially with age, even a slight bump in the wrong direction can snap one or more of these off. And once that happens again, you've got to replace the entire board. So I uh, was willing to at least hear this thing out, give it a shot, seems to have paid off. And speaking of paid, we definitely would have paid a pretty penny for a replacement board like this one. It's very difficult to find Z-series motherboards that are older and in really good condition. And I think that's what keeps the prices up, especially on Intel side. So we saved ourselves a lot of money potentially by performing the surgery that we did, and I do have confidence that it will stand the test of time. Worst case, it doesn't. He brings the rig back to us and we replace the board anyway. He'll be taken care of regardless. And with that, if you again have a broken system like this one and you'd like a chance to have it fixed in a video like this, it will cost you zero dollars and zero cents if you're chosen. Be sure to fill out that form linked in this video's description. Speaking of, down there as well, you'll find a link to our new YouTube channel called Salazar's Cars, where I'm currently in the process of rebuilding a crash damaged Audi S5. It's a bit like fixer flop, just at a you know much larger scale frankly, a scarier scale. So if you wanna see me make a fool of myself over there, be sure to get subscribed for a chance to also win this beautifully themed Starforge RuneScape PC. That one's only running for a couple more weeks as of time of publishing this video. So be sure to hop over there if you haven't already. Thank you again so much for the support. Thank you for the viewership. Consider liking this one, subscribing and sticking around for the next. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.